you'd like to join me in giving a hand of gratitude to Jesus for what he's done for us, would you do that? Wow. My son is a carpenter by trade. He lives in Charlotte, North Carolina, and he's mostly a remodeler and a fixer of homes. Once in a while while I'm back there, I'll go hang with him for a day and marvel at the fact that this guy I taught to swing a hammer and use a screwdriver when he was six can now outdo his daddy in many, many things. We uh, went out one day, and he was looking at homes and making estimates to bid on the work and we came to this one house, and I walked in and walked all around through the house. Well, he didn't immediately pay no attention to the house. He crawled underneath it in the crawl space there in this pier and beam structure house. And he came out, and I looked at him and said, Son, there's some money to be made here, you know, just a lot of remodeling small things. I, I think this would be a good house to bid on. He said, Dad, I won't touch it. The foundation is bad. And it does not matter what I do above ground to the structure of this house. If the foundation of the house is not good, my work will not stand. Jesus said the exact same thing to us 2,000 years ago. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you're a guest, my name is Dan Sutherland. We're honored to have you here. I'm one of the pastors at Westside, and we are note takers here. You received an insert when you came in. Everybody find it. Wave it at me. We're going to write some things down. We have learned that what sticks in our minds, drips into our hearts, works its way out in our lives, and sticking it in your mind goes up when you write it down. We're beginning an amazing time today. Not just a new series, but, but I believe our most serious adventure yet in going hard after God. Today is the first of seven weeks, seven weekends, six weeks in between of a, of a push, of an effort, of a commitment called 40 Days in the Word. It's going to be a phenomenal faith adventure. I welcome you into it. Here's the big idea for the teaching series we begin on today. Jesus invites us to love him, to learn from him, and to live for him. It's a threefold invitation. The Son of God himself, Jesus, invites us to love him more deeply, to learn from him more carefully, and to live for him more fully in these 40 days than we ever have before. Welcome to this faith adventure. We're going to talk today about how do I build my life on a solid foundation? How do I build my life on Jesus? How do I build my life on the Word? So the big idea for today's teaching is this. Everyone builds their life on something. Now think about that. Let's put the pause button right there. Just hit it for a minute. Everyone builds their life on something. And the thing that people say they're building lives on is not always backed up by the reality of their calendar and their checkbook. You want to know somebody's priorities, look at where they spend their time and their money. Some of us appear to be building our lives on success at work. We will give 60, 70, 80 hours a week, ignore family, ignore relationships, even ignore God in order to succeed in the workplace. Really? Is that our goal in life? Others of us, it's about money. The thing we count more carefully than anything else is the dollar and cent amounts. We, we double check our balance three and four and five times a day. We're, we're making sure that it's coming in and it's being stored up and there's nothing wrong with money. But really, is that what we want to drive our lives? For some of us, we build our lives on popularity or on reputation. We are most concerned about what everybody else thinks about us. Some of us build our lives on fun, on thrill. I got a little of that in me. For some of us, we're building our lives on, on ourselves. We really worship this more than we worship this. Jesus says so clearly that we need to build our lives on him. Write this in. Jesus is the only foundation that will stand the only one you build it on anything else it can be washed away in a moment you build it on him 
It stands for eternity. In this series, we're going to be talking a lot about the Word, 40 days in the Word. And that phrase is actually used in two distinct ways in the Scripture. So I want to give you both of those ways, and I want to be very clear about them throughout this series. So let me take just a minute to lay this foundation piece. The first way that the phrase, the Word, and used in Scripture is to refer to Jesus, who is the living Word of God. Now, I've listed some references there for you. In John 1, 1, God tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. That's what it says in John 1, verse 1. It's obviously a reference to Jesus the living word. How do we know that? Because 14 verses later in John 1, 14, God goes on to write in his written word. He says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Glory is of the only begotten from the Father. And then it begins to tell the Jesus story. He's the living word. Sometimes when you read scripture and it refers to the word, it's literally referring to to Jesus. But sometimes when you use scripture, it's used a second way. The phrase, the word, is referring to the Bible itself, which is the written word of God. Would you put that in your notes? It's the written word of God. Matthew 4 4. You remember when Jesus was being tempted and he said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, the written word of God. In the book of Luke, it tells us that we ought to pay attention to God's word. So scripture uses the phrase, the word, sometimes to refer to Jesus, the living word, sometimes to refer to the Bible itself, the written word. Everybody look this way. Both are important. But our adventure in this series is Jesus, the living word, who we get to know through the Bible, the written word. There's a priority here, Jesus over Scripture. Now, why would I say that? Because I grew up in a church background where people could quote you the Bible, could give you whole chapters, could tell you the three eschatological views of the book of Revelation, which, by the way, if you know those, you're studying too much. <laughs> and they didn't know Jesus. They were some of the meanest, nastiest people I have ever known. Jesus had not penetrated their hearts and their lives at all. They had made the Bible into their idol. Oh, they could quote it to you, but they couldn't live it at all. God is much more concerned about us experiencing his son, the living word, than he is us knowing the Bible, the written word. However, the best way to get to know his son, the living word, is through the Bible, his written word. One's a tool, one's the goal. Does that make sense? So our goal in 40 days is not for you to get deeper in the Bible. Could care less. Our goal in this 40 days is for us to get to know Jesus better through the tool that is the Bible. Does that make sense? Living word above written word. We're going to use both. So write this in. Here's, here's the goal. In 40 days, we're going to use both meetings. We want to center on Jesus. He's the living word. He's what we talk about at Westside. Why? He's all we got. It's him. That's the gospel. Jesus, one word. But we want to do it by getting into the Bible, which is the written word. So the lesson today is basically, how do I build my life on Jesus? How do I make sure I'm building my life on the living word by getting more out of the Bible, the written word? There are four ways that you and I can get to know Jesus better through the Bible. We're going to start on the easiest one and do sort of a stair-step climb today. You ready? Listen for the one with your name on it. Listen for the one that hits you where you are right now. The first one is hear God's word. If we want to know Jesus better, we need to hear the Bible, the written word taught. Look at what Scripture says. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about 
Christ. Now, this feels a little bit today like I'm preaching to the choir, which means I'm talking to the folks that are here about why it's important to be here, but you're the only ones I've got, so let me talk for a minute. You ready? (laughs) Don't miss a single Sunday the next six weeks. See, American Christianity has gotten to this place in our church going, well, it's so nuts today. Let's go outside and play golf and have a picnic instead. We can worship God outside just as well as we can at church. True, but the only way you're talking to him when you're hitting a golf ball is not in praise. <laughs> well, you know, really we're tired and we got people in town and, you know, hey, let's, let's just not worry about it. You know, we'll just go next week. It's not a big deal. No, no. For 40 days, we're going to say, God, we're going to focus on hearing you more than we ever have. We're going to go harder after you than we've ever gone before. And part of that is, God, we're going to be here. If you're out of town, I get it. But that's why we do this wonderful thing called online. You can still catch it. One of the truck driver guys in one of the fire groups that I'm in, told a story about listening online, driving down the road in Massachusetts or Maine or some state that started with an M. (laughs) It's crazy thought. Hear the word. In fact, I encourage you, don't just come this next 40 days, but walk in here saying, God, speak to me. God, speak to me. I am grateful for your presence in my life. I want to know you more. I want to learn of you more. I want to live for you more. Speak, and I'll respond. And God will show up in a huge way. So the challenge, you've already got it. The challenge is attend every week for 40 days. Make the commitment as a family. We're going to be here. We're going to be here. If we're out of town, we're still going to be here. We're going to get online. We want to hear from God for these 40 days. That's the first lowest step, but a big one. The second step is if we want to learn more about the living word through the written word, we have got to read God's word. We've got to read scripture. Listen to what the Bible says about the importance of this. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who, love this, looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. I've tried to do this. You know, you look in the mirror and go, there is no hope here. And you just just walk on. Yeah. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, that's the written word, and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I'll make you a prophecy. I'm willing to wager that every one of us looked in a mirror this morning. You know why we look in the mirror first thing in the morning? To assess the damage that was done overnight. For some of us, it is a tough assessment. Hair every direction, a new bump right there. Wow, we just look and go, really? This is what I have to work with? (laughs) Ladies, you've got it tougher than we do because in our culture, you know, the makeup thing falls to you ladies and and men don't do that. And and you know what, men, I really think it's because what else could you do with this? There's just no hope. But... (laughs) But my wife's statement about makeup, I've asked her from time to time, honey, is it really worth the 15 or 20 minutes you give to that every day? And her statement is, every old barn looks better with a new coat of paint. (laughs) Now, if you don't like that, email her, (laughs) not me. We look, and then we start working immediately on what we see. Or we look, and then we turn away and try to forget it. Queen Elizabeth celebrated her 50th anniversary this summer. You probably caught the big festivities in London. Big deal. One monarch, 50 years. I mean, we, we can't stand a president for four years, much less <laughs> a monarch for 50 years. But, but quite a lady and, and quite, quite a remarkable ruler and leader for centuries. Buckingham Palace has had full-length mirrors throughout the palace. And the reasoning is so that the royalty can see themselves fully in every room that they go into. 
And the story is that Queen Elizabeth loved that in her 20s and 30s and 40s and started loving it less and less and began having the mirrors removed from Buckingham Palace because she didn't want to look. I would suggest to you that that is precisely why some of us have quit reading this book. When I read it, I see myself and I go, ugh. When I read it, I see how awesome God is, but then I compare it to myself and I go, wow. When I read it, I go, I don't want to do that. I don't like that verse. I'm not reading that chapter ever again. <laughs> and you get enough of those, you just quit reading it altogether because it makes us look at ourselves. I'm going to suggest that looking in this mirror every day is a whole lot more important than looking in that full-length thing every day physically. What would happen if for 40 days we read the Bible every day? For some of us, it'd be a first. For others, it'd be a first in a long time. Let's read his book together. Let's say, Jesus, we're so serious, we're not going to miss worship for 40 days, and we're not going to miss a day of reading for 40 days. Now, there's a reading plan, a daily reading plan, that you can get by being in one of the 40-day groups. By the way, it's not 40 days in Leviticus, okay? It's 40 days of reading that's going to feed your soul in an amazing, amazing way. Some of you are saying, wow, I don't know about this. Men, saw a study recently that says 50% of men that have finished their formal schooling, either high school or college, never read another book. 50%. It's really not because we can't read, it's because we don't want to. I got great news. It's called version. Go online and look up version. You can do an audio Bible reading every day where while you're going to work in the morning you can do it on your phone and it will read you out loud you don't have to read it it reads for you the passage for the day what would happen if for 40 days we really got into the word the challenge you've already figured it out read your Bible every day for 40 days every day for 40 days God talk to me God, I'm listening. God, I want to love you. I want to learn from you, and I want to live for you more. Speak to me today as I read my Bible. First thing, let's hear God's Word. Let's be here all 40 days every Sunday. Secondly, let's read God's Word every day. Thirdly, going on up the staircase, study God's Word. Study God's Word. There are so many verses that talk about the importance of listening to the written Word and studying it in order to know the living word, Jesus. In fact, my biggest challenge this week was narrowing down the 40 verses I wanted to use and just trying to pick a few for us to center on. But Joshua talks about this, Old Testament as well as New. And listen to what Joshua says. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. There's a reason I'm in a Monday night group. We study together. We talk about what's God doing in your life. What, what's Scripture saying to you? How's that working? We, we pray for each other. Where are you struggling? Where are you winning? Where are you losing? We hold each other accountable. Sometimes that means giving each other a hug, and sometimes that means kicking each other in the boat diggity. I need that group. My group meets on Monday night during Monday night football. Ugh. I need it. And if I've been going hard after Christ for 40 years and been a pastor for 35, and I still need a group, I'm saying to every one of us, you need a group. Now, some of you are thinking, I can study on my own. You can. There's no doubt. You should. But what happens spiritually when 
You're studying about God on the weekend in the big group, listening, hoping God will speak. You're reading your Bible every day individually, and you're also studying in a small group where you can participate and ask questions and voice concerns. The synergy goes off the hook. I'm inviting you to get in a group for six weeks. Some of you have been saying, I need to be in a group. We've never done that. Or I used to. We hadn't been back six weeks. Six weeks. That's all. We have more than 300 groups available online. Don't tell me there's not a group for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need a group. I'll be your groupie. Tell them. (laughs) That means you'll go with them. The challenge, get in a group for 40 days, guys. Get in a group. That's the challenge. So the first step is I want to hear God's word. What would happen if we said, God, we're going hard after you. We're going to be at church every week for 40 days. Secondly, I'm going to read your word, God. I'm going to listen to you every day on my own individually. I'm going to read your book every day for 40 days. Thirdly, God, I want to study it. I want to be in a group. I can do this, Lord, for six weeks. But lastly, I've got to act on God's word. None of it matters without action. None of it. If all we do in my Monday night group is talk about what God's teaching us and where we're challenged and pray for each other and walk away and nobody ever acts, then I might as well watch Monday night football. It's about action. We have been misled to believe that the reason you read and study and listen to the written word, the Bible being taught, reason you read it, reason you study it, is for information, it's for knowledge. No. No. It's for action. So that you can know and follow and go hard after the living word, after Jesus himself. Look at what scripture says. It says it so many times. You remember that that thing we started with talking about today? My son carpenter not wanting to build a house or remodel a house or fix a house with a bad foundation here's the passage where jesus talks about that therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock the rain came down the streams rose the winds blew and beat against the house yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Look back in the middle. It says, if you don't put his word into practice, you're a foolish man. It does not bother me when other people call me a fool. Personally, I think they're right about half the time. But the thought that God would look at me as foolish. This passage says, if you come to church and hear God's word, if you read the Bible and hear from God, if you go to a group and you hear from God and you don't put it into practice, you're a fool. God's warning us, you're a fool. It's about acting. It's about doing something. The point is not information, it's application. The point is not knowing the scripture, it's knowing the God of the scripture. The point is not mastering the written word, it's submitting your life to the master who is the living word. What are we going to do about what we know? What could happen, church, if for 40 days all 5,000 of us went harder after God than we ever have before? 40,000 Westsiders saying, Jesus, we're serious. The guys at the prison saying, Jesus, we're serious. Speedway saying, Jesus, we're serious. Lenexa, online folks around the globe saying, we are serious. God, we want you to show up these 40 days. If we act by being here, 
by reading his word every day, by getting in a group, and by doing whatever he gives us to do, I believe we will hear him say, way to go, church. How many of you were at the big event last weekend where we were outdoors? Was that amazingly fun? Yeah, I just walked away from that day saying, God, you just gave us your favor today. Do you realize that was the coolest day since May? And it just happened to fall when we were all outdoors. I mean, the crowd was great. The, the rides and stuff for the kids was awesome. The worship was unique. Um, boy, God was just, it was just a special day all the way around. And at the end of that service, I had finished, and Dan Shavron was up doing the last word and going to pray for us. So I was heading to the back where I could try to get between most of you and the parking area where the rides were so I could say hey to as many as I could as, as you came through. And uh, I feel an arm grab me on each arm, just grab me. And I look over, and it's two of our security guys that are playing clothes for the day. Now, they're both policemen. That's what they do vocationally. And um, they, they're both packing, but they're in plain clothes. They're being security for the day, and they're grabbing me and making a joke. And one of them says, sir, uh, we've had a security report on you. You need to come with us. <laughs> and the fun part was all of a sudden, one arm just gets released. And I turn around and I look, and my son, who was trailing behind me, and I didn't know it, sees two plainclothes guys that he doesn't know I know grab me. So he has grabbed the one off of my right arm in a chokehold and has him up <laughs> off the ground. This is an armed officer. And I went, that's a, my boy. That's my boy. I'm proud of him. Look at that. I believe if we go hard after Jesus, the living word for the next 40 days. We could all hear him say to us individually, that's my boy. That's my girl. They've got a heart for me. 40 days of going hard. Let's go hard, church. Last thing in your notes and an action step to follow. Here's the challenge. Sign the covenant. Sign up. Which covenant? Thanks for asking. It's in your notes. Go ahead and put your notes away. Find this, but stay focused. Signing a covenant, making a covenant, is a biblical idea. It's in the book of Nehemiah. It's in other places through the Scripture where God's people get serious about going after him, and they say, we're going to go for it. We're going to make a covenant with God. This simply says, one of my favorite verses, 2 Timothy 3, 16, all Scripture is God-breed that is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you're willing to be here the next 40 days on Sundays, if you're willing to read your Bible for those 40 days, we're going to do some Scripture memory in our services beginning next week. We're going to do it as a church together. It'll be fun. If you're willing to act on whatever God says for 40 days, sign this. It's a covenant between you and God. First line's for your signature. Third line says church. That's west side. Last line's the date. Today is 916. That second line says pastor. Let me help you with that. Get your spiritual mentor to sign that and witness that you've signed it. That may be your small group leader. That might be the host in the 40 days group you're going to be in. Whoever has mentored you spiritually. The pastors on the staff here are willing to sign them, but in all honesty, I'd rather it be somebody that pastors you personally so that when they run into you, they can look at you and say, hey, you said you were going hard after God for 40 days. Are you doing it? The world has yet to see what God can do through one church fully surrendered to him. He's ready 40 days from now to say, that's my boy. That's my girl. That's my church. Let's go hard, Westside. I expect to see you next week.